All right, I'm here with Connor Paolo at uh, Fantastic Fest for the U.S. premiere of Stakeland, which uh, just premiered in Toronto last week, and yes, I was sir. there and won the Audience Award, the Midnight Madness Award. So there's a lot of buzz coming in here about the film. Uh, why don't you tell us, start off with a little bit about who you play, what's your character? Uh, I play a character called Martin, who is, uh, as I've been saying, a boy that I think was born at the wrong time in American history so far, that... Uh, he basically wakes up to the to a, a vampire epidemic. Uh, is a country boy from West Virginia. Doesn't really know what's going on. Um, doesn't necessarily have access to, to you know, TV or, or anything. Once once this thing starts, power lines go down. All communication kind of goes down, and the country's in chaos. And then, uh, luckily or, or unluckily, he's saved by a vampire hunter named Mister. And um, is is not just being uh, taken care of and, and escorted to a safe haven, but he's now in league with a guy who gets off on, on killing and uh, un unwittingly uh, becomes very much his apprentice and starts to see things from his point of view and, and spends his nights going out looking for things to stab. And uh, what, did you, what attracted you to the project? Um, I, I remember I, I, was still, I was still living at home with my parents when I, when I got sent the script to my dad had read the breakdown and just said, you're gonna to wanna to do this. And I looked at it, and then I read it, and um, it was just brilliant. It was, yeah. it was sparse, and for a, a writer who also I, I had read is gonna be starring in the film, to write his character with basically no dialogue is pretty hard to find, right. and shows an incredible amount of confidence in his story and in his message. And um, I, love, I love any script with voiceover, because I think uh, narration is something that is, is pushed aside by a lot of actors and something that, that winds up being very underused when it can really be the heart of a, of a film, the heart of a character. So the idea that Martin, who, who narrates this film, that uh, wasn't going to speak a lot and you were gonna, the only way you were going to be able to get inside this kid's head was through his retrospective recounting of these events really was interesting to me. And then it just, you know, it's got religious commentary and political commentary and social commentary and, and emotional commentary and it just... I thought it, it nailed things from every angle, so I was really excited. Yeah, it's, the narration's funny, because you that was the first thing I noticed. Uh, once it started out, and I thought, oh, all right, another movie that starts with voiceover, and then you know you continue, and I thought, oh, this is being told from the kid's point of sure. view. And that changed, I mean, you know, you can imagine what it would be like if, if it wasn't there, or from sure. Mr.'s point of view. But that makes it a coming-of-age story. Absolutely. And and so you've got this, you know, I described it as, as The Road meets I Am Legend meets uh, Forbidden Kingdom meets sure. Karate Kid shot by George Romero. <laughs> and and so it's, it's you know, it takes a genre and comes up with a, a way of telling the story differently. Are you familiar with the genre? Do you watch? You know, I, I, hadn't, I hadn't even heard the term genre film until I got involved in this project. And... and uh, now working in this film, working with Daniel Harris, and, and being uh, exposed to Fangoria and Fearnet and Dread Central and all these different uh, genre outlets um, has been a lot of like, wow, this whole subculture of filmmaking exists that I wasn't, I wasn't really connected to. Um, and it's super cool. Uh, I, I think that, uh, I think that, that uh, saying that, that this type of film is going to be any type of category, and then and then you're suddenly expecting a certain or something from the movie, uh, is usually dangerous because um, I don't like walking into anything with expectations. But uh, if you have expectations, I, I can say that I think this film will defy them. Yeah, that that was my and a lot of the audience reactions. I think it why it won that award. Uh, you've got about forty TV episodes to your credit, not <laughs> counting I don't know how many you did of One Life to Live. Yeah, no one seems to know. <laughs> it's not on IMDb. No, you can't find it. And the two Law and Order and sure. uh, Mercy and Thirty Something Gossip Girl, and the nine films, uh, you know, which uh, I talked about on when I previewed this, this film. Sure. Snow Angels just blew me away, and Thank I know you. we were, were talking about Stakeland, but I just I just want to get some thoughts from you about Snow Angels because I I sure. just think that's one of the greatest indies of the last decade. Wow. Um, I, that was uh, that was a, a script that, that I, I read uh, when I went in for that. Uh, I guess back in two thousand six, and uh, I read the character of Warren that I wound up playing, and just said, "Oh my God, this is this is my best friend, uh, Seamus. I can I can play this. I know this guy." Um, and it my best friend for quite some time. 
So, um, and then I, I met with David Gordon Green and, and anyone who's ever worked with him, it's just, I, it's so much fun. Uh, he's, uh, he's got a whole style uh, all his own and, and just, uh, I, when I, when I first uh, started shooting with him, we sat down and he just said, look, I, you know, I don't remember what it's like to be 15, so <laughs> you tell me what's going through your head. And uh, just gave me so much leeway to just have a good time. And, and I yeah, loved that I'd set. see him at one of the screenings and he, he said, oh, I basically just throw my actors on set and, and he does. unscript it and let them go for it. And he'll just kind of sit behind the camera and, uh, and just call out ideas or lines. I and mean, he's a funny motherfucker. I mean, this guy is, is, is a funny guy. Yeah. And uh, I was kind of playing the one character that had some levity in an otherwise pretty uh, downtrodden story. And uh, so he and I got to have a really good time just trying to find the moments of, of humor. You, you were like, the comic relief in that film. Exactly. And, and uh, every time I saw it, which was about a half dozen times, uh, people just cracked up. It, you know, that's what gallows humor, that's what people sure. needed. Sure, sure. Uh, and it got me a, a, an opportunity to, to you know, work with, with Michael Ringarano and, and Olivia Thirlby, uh, two young actors that I think are just phenomenal. Mm. And, uh, and I've gotten to work with, with Sam Rockwell uh, another time since, and, and I don't think he got much better than that guy. Absolutely. And watching him do his thing. Um, unfortunately, I've, I've done two films with a guy and never had any scenes with him, which is something that haunts me now and just means that I have to do another film with him because he's just uh, he's brilliant. We're going to make it happen. Yeah, we, we need to.